Hi, good morning YouTube. I've had a few viewers request some details about my home automation system, so this video will be an introduction to that. I'll follow up this introduction with some videos delving into some home automation tasks I've used my system for. I have a Z-Wave system with a Vera Light controller. That's the small white box with the green cover. Not much to the controller. It has three plugs in back for 12 volt DC power, Ethernet, and USB, and a couple of push buttons and LEDs. And if you get one of these, be sure to plug in a USB thumb drive in the back. The bigger the better. Then enable the unit to use the USB drive for logging. This unit is made by Vera Control, a link to their web page in the video description. They make a number of different controllers, some with built-in Wi-Fi access points, and I think some have wireless GSM support. Not much to this unit, it's based on a 500 MHz MIPS CPU. In a past career, I used to work for Silicon Graphics, who have acquired MIPS and at the time used MIPS processors exclusively. I still have an old SGI 02 workstation with a 200 MHz MIPS CPU in it, so this Vera Lite is more powerful than that workstation. There are many other Z-Wave controller options available. I chose the Vera line as it seemed quite well supported and had the features I was looking for. It runs the MIOS platform and the LUUP or Lua U plug and play software engine. Lots of interesting information on the MIOS site. UPnP support means you can interface with other UPnP devices in your house. I'll add a link to this Vera user forum in the video description so you can see what sort of things Vera users are doing with their systems. So what is Z-Wave? Basically, it's a low-power mesh networking technology designed for use in home automation and security. Sigma Designs is a major supplier of Z-Wave interface ICs. Z-Wave operates in the sub 1 GHz range and transmit power is about 1 milliwatt. Low power is important as it allows for battery-operated Z-Wave devices to have a reasonable operating time. I have some battery powered wall switches that have been going for 18 months now with the original batteries. Line powered devices can function as signal repeaters in the mesh network. As you add devices up to 232 in a fully populated network, the strength of the network increases as there are more repeaters. So unlike your home Wi-Fi network that seems to get slower and slower the more devices you add to it, Z-Wave is the opposite. Z-Wave is a low data rate network. Typical speeds are 9.6K up to 100K bits per second. And yes, that's K as in kilo, not M as in mega. It's mainly event driven, so devices typically sit quiet for 99.9% .9 of the time until something happens, an event. Then they transmit details of that event to the controller and then some response to that event is transmitted to one or more devices. There may also be some polling of devices that happens at specified intervals. There are over 325 manufacturers signed up with the Z-Wave Alliance. Big names like GE, Leviton, ADT, etc. There are over 1,350 licensed Z-Wave compatible products available. In short, a Z-Wave network consists of a main controller one or more devices, and possibly some slave controllers. The devices send event reports to the controller. For example, a switch was activated, or motion was sensed, or a thermostat set point was reached. Then the controller processes that device input and routes it to a user-defined scene that tells the controller what to do with that event. A simple scene might be if a light switch is closed, turn on a light. A complex scene might be, if the video projector is turned on, dim the lights in the media room, close the curtains, and lower the projector screen. What's the big deal, you might ask? 
It's easy enough to run a wire from a switch to a light and make it turn on without Z-Wave. Well, yes, that's correct, but with Z-Wave, there's no need to run that wire between the switch and the light. That switch can be hardwired, battery operated, on a remote, or even on a phone or tablet PC. And the light can be any place else in the house, and as long as it has power and a Z-Wave signal, it can be turned on and off remotely. This is a real boon for adding Z-Wave to an existing house. It saves tearing up walls and ceilings, running wires and installing electrical boxes. In an upcoming video, I'll show how I use Z-Wave to add a combination exhaust fan, ceiling, and night light to two bathrooms that only had a single switch and wire running to the attic. There are other competing home automation networks out there. Zigbee is one, and then there's Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. There are also older technologies out there that you may have heard of, like X10. I still have a couple of X10 control devices in my house. That technology used power line communication. When I first got my Z-Wave controller, I thought it was kind of like my old X10 system. But after using it and adding some additional devices and applications to the system, it's so much more capable. If you're at all interested in home automation, I would pick up a system and start playing with it. To paraphrase an old saying, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, a Z-Wave system makes a lot of things look like nails. There's a bit of a learning curve with the system, but once it's up and running, you'll find more and more you can do with it. So stay tuned as I post additional videos showing some of the projects I've done with my Z-Wave system, like home energy monitoring. And if you have any questions or requests, post them in the comment section below. Be sure to rate and share this video if you liked it. Feel free to check out some of my other videos and subscribe to this channel for future updates. And as always, thanks for watching.